As climate change quickly becomes a hot topic in the media around the globe, a lot of misconceptions can spring up as well. People tend to exaggerate or debate while lacking proper research. Because of the sudden sudden media exposure, we saw an opportunity to provide the facts in relation to myths spreading around. Climate change has huge long-term impacts that that people are simply not aware of, or at least do not have the proper resources. Let's talk about some myths and misconceptions about the climate change debate. First, people believe that climate change is a naturally occurring process. This is a myth. Usually in history, such as in the Ice Age, it has been a naturally occurring process that was due to the Earth's orbit. But actually, in this situation, it is not due to the orbit. It is due to human-made greenhouse gases. All evidence, all scientific evidence at this point, uh, really points to the fact that we are increasing, we are increasing the temperature of the planet. Let's talk about the greenhouse effect. So what's happening here is that energy from the sun gets uh, absorbed by the Earth's atmosphere. And usually it's supposed to filter in and out. So it can easily pass into space and back onto Earth while keeping the Earth nice, insulated, and warm. Now, what's happening is that these greenhouse gases, such as CO2, methane, or nitrous oxide, etc., are trapping all of that energy and heat under the atmosphere, thus heating the Earth. Um, They said this was going to happen. They said, hey, look, we're releasing CO2 into the atmosphere. CO2 is a greenhouse gas. We already know what that does. If you just look at Venus, um, Venus has a lot of CO2 in its atmosphere, and it's, uh, it's the hottest planet in our solar system for that reason. So let's talk about relevant impacts. So how do we see this? First, with weather, climate change can actually have a lot of uh, stress on weather patterns due to uh, weird things happening in the atmosphere, a lot of energy getting trapped, a lot of heat and hot and cold air uh, clashing with each other. It's just, it creates a lot of stress there. So what can happen is that there are more droughts, such as in California and Australia, where we see that there are huge major droughts and then None of these plants have enough water in order to keep themselves alive. And so when a fire starts, it just keeps spreading and it just keeps burning up all these dead plants. And that's how these wildfires spread so quickly because of these extreme droughts that are caused by climate stress. What can also affect our population is agriculture. We get a lot of our food from farming and from agriculture. But uh, climate change is actually very negatively affecting this because what's happening is that if the temperature rises, then a lot of different uh, crops would have a lot harder time growing. So farmers would have to adapt and start growing new crops. The issue with that is that farmers don't want to do that. So like if we start having a more tropical-ish climate where it's really warm and hot here, um, then those farmers would have to adapt, and instead of growing wheat and corn, they would have to grow stuff like mangoes and oranges. And farmers do not want to adapt to that. It is very difficult for farmers to do that. They've been learning about this their whole lives. They've been specializing in it. And, I mean, already a lot less agriculture has been happening due to uh, soil erosion, and this just will lead to less and less, less agriculture, less and less productivity with agriculture leading to possible starvation. The United States provides a lot of agriculture exports to other countries, and a lot of countries can't even provide their own agriculture and their own food. And so if the United States starts decreasing agriculture exports, a lot of countries will starve, which will terribly hurt those populations. Next, let's talk about sea levels. So, since 1880, the sea sea levels have risen 8 inches. That seems pretty little, but it's actually a ton. This means that over time, if glaciers continue to melt and the uh, ice caps continue to lose their snow, then the ocean levels will rise and we'll start seeing flooding of the coasts. And so most humans actually live close to bodies of water like the oceans. If if the ocean level rises, if sea levels rise because ice caps melt, um, then a lot of places where people live, like Florida, will be completely underwater. So like people in Florida will just like 
Florida just won't exist, bro. Like, it, it just wouldn't. It'd be gone. So, that's really rough. <laughs> and also, just continuing on when I talked about our coral reefs, the higher uh, temperatures seriously affecting that. Actually, a lot of seaweed and sea plants provide a ton of oxygen for us with already our huge impacts of deforestation happening and then plus this climate change which is destroying those plants we are going to see a very huge decrease in oxygen and with the uh, constant rate of co2 that we're propelling out of our cars and our houses and all that stuff we're not gonna have oxygen left like there are a lot of people in the world and there's not a lot of plants that sort of sucks. <laughs>